Confessions of an Office Supply Junkie. Welcome everybody back to the channel. We haven't done an Office Supply Junkie video in a while, and that doesn't mean I'm not still an Office Supply Junkie. But I was going through some of my favorite pens here. This is the Coaxis Rail Pen. It's a ballpoint pen and a nice little mechanical uh, kind of uh, design. Uh, one of my favorite mechanical pencils, I got a, what, last year I believe it was the Rotring 600 in the 0.7 millimeter LEDs. I really love these, the build quality of these things. Here's an interesting pencil. This is a wood caseless pencil. It's a Statler HB All x Right pencil. And its main feature is the body is made completely from graphite uh, writing lead and the outside is covered in some kind of a lacquer or paint finish so you don't get the graphite on your hand. So it's a woodless pencil. Uh, here is my, really my all time favorite kind of ballpoint pen is the Bic Crystal, the standard medium point blue ink pen. Here's one of my favorite, all time favorite fountain pens is the Lamy Safari. Uh, the steel nib, I think this is a fine point. And I believe this one I am sporting a uh, converter and I'm using Parker Quink Blue Black Ink, which is my favorite ink. Well, one of the things I haven't really gotten into is brush pens. Now, brush pens are a huge thing on YouTube. If you do a search for Pentel brush pen, there are dozens and dozens and dozens of videos how to use them how to draw cartoon style with them, anime style, and also how to convert them from cartridge fill to uh, bulk fill in the, in the body of the pen. There's all kinds of videos about that. So I'm really on the, on the tail end of, of covering uh, Pentel brush pens. But this is my first brush pen, and I thought it would be fun to open it up and try it out. Um, I first really heard about these from one of my favorite uh, bloggers and artists is Austin Cleon. And I was going through his recent article of the top 100 things that he discovered or found in the year 2019. And one of those things that he really uh, listed as one of his favorite things was Pentel brush pens. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. A brush pen, huh? That just tells you that I'm so far behind the times. But let's go ahead and get into this. Well, okay, so this is the a medium sized tip of the Pentel brush pen. And the package says there's three pieces that come with it, basically the pen and two cartridges. Of course, you're going to want to load one cartridge into the pen, so it really only comes with one spare cartridge. There's plenty of videos out there, by the way, on the internet about these pens, so this is no groundbreaking video. Okay the pen itself, and two cartridges. Refill directions. Okay, so here is the pen. I like that there's a nice little kanji character on a, underneath the clip. I don't know what it, exactly what it says, but... So well, there's two of these FP10 cartridges, and they look very much... Remind, they remind me of fountain pen cartridges. So the cap pulls off, so you have to remember not to unscrew the cap, because to unscrew the cap you would actually uh, probably unscrew the body of the pen. So just a brief glance at the tip, it is some kind of synthetic fibers. And from what I've read, uh, they're pretty rugged, these pens are. Austin Cleon, the person who introduced me to these pens, uh, says his Pentel brush pen has been running for years on the same pen. So we unscrew the body of the pen, and there is a tip in here that works very much like a fountain pen cartridge system. So there is a recess in the front end of the cartridge, and that, that little extension on the back of the pen mechanism goes into the cartridge. And then there is a, right about where the ink starts on this cartridge, there's a diaphragm, a plastic diaphragm, and you have to push this until it um, breaks the diaphragm, like that which takes a little bit of force. And then you screw the uh, pen cap back together. Now the second part of this filling up the Pentel brush pen is you actually have to hold it vertically like this and wait for the ink to start flowing from the cartridge into the pen mechanism down into the body of the pen. And you may have to shake it a little bit. So 
I'm gonna sit here and kind of wait for the ink to start flowing. This is really a first time event. Once you've been using the pen and you uh, want to change cartridges, of course, it's the tip is already going to be inky and the capillary action will draw the ink from the new cartridge. But a virgin pen unused, yeah, you'll have to sit there and wait for the ink to start flowing. It's only been about a minute or so, but I can already see that the uh, brush tip is starting to fill up with ink, which is pretty cool. So from what I've been able to watch other people on YouTube, just sort of starting to draw the ink out of the tip, the ca capillary action will slowly begin to fill the tip up from the cartridge. There it goes. Now we're starting to get more of a inky tip and the broad side of the brush you can get nice shading with it. Well, I'm clearly no artist or cartoonist or illustrator or graphic artist, but um, I really like the idea of a brush pen. I, this is a new thing to me. They've been out, of course, for decades. But uh, I like the idea that it's kind of a modern uh, reinvention of the ancient brush. You know, the brush has been around for millennia. People have been painting with brushes and writing with brushes. This is just a modern incarnation of making the brush more like a pen or a, the convenience of a cartridge kind of a pen with a synthetic tip that flexes and has the uh, properties of a brush. So people who are skilled with the brush pen, uh, it offers them the ability to do really fine strokes, fine lines of shading. We're using the, the fine tip of the pen, and it's a certain technique you have to learn to just have the finest touch onto the paper. And then if you use more of the side of the brush, you can get wide swaths of dark ink for heavy shading. So it really has this wonderful flexibility of the brush. And it is really a brush pen. It is like a brush, but it's like a pen. It's a hybrid device. I'm going to start doodling with this, and I think that's one of the key things that is important about tools like this, is enabling us to just be creative on our own terms. I don't call myself an artist, I don't believe I am, but everybody, including myself, has some kind of latent talent, and I think there's a lot of power in sitting down in front of a blank piece of paper with a nice tool to make marks like a brush pen. And just making marks on paper is so satisfying. And I'm gonna enjoy this. I'm gonna just be doing some doodling and sketching maybe, and just free flow of imagination. That's what these kind of tools are all about. If you do go on YouTube and discover the world of brush pens, you'll find there's a lot of other uh, Pentel types of brush pens. There's painting pens. There's other brands of brush pens. There's comparison videos between Pentel and other brands. And that's a whole other rabbit hole that you could fall down into. And I invite you to do that if you're interested in it. But for myself, just this one brush pen is going to be interesting. I'm going to enjoy this. As I said earlier, these do come with a spare cartridge in this uh, pack, but you can also buy the cartridges separate. These cartridge refills for the brush pins can get a little bit expensive. The ink itself is a little more viscous than fountain pen ink, but I have seen people on the internet that have refilled these with a tiny syringe. They've refilled these cartridges with fountain pen ink. Probably not a good idea to use India ink only because it will dry and harden Though there are also other people who have taken the body of the pen and put an O-ring seal along here where the cap seals and then fill up the entire back body of the pen with ink, make the body of the pen like a converter. 
that's another modification you can do to the brush pin if you want to go down that rabbit hole. But for now, this is Joe Van Cleve. I'm just now exploring the world of brush pins and what kind of doodling and art and sketching it enables me to do, and I'm looking forward to this journey. I invite you guys to find some tools to make you creative. Until next time, you have yourselves a great day. Bye-bye.